Welcome to RK Tutorials. Solutions to Engineering Mechanics, 5th edition, S. Timishenko, D. H. Eng, J. V. Rao, and Sukmar Party. In this tutorial, we will discuss problem set 2.3, problem number 2.27. What axial forces does the vertical load P induce the members of the system shown in the figure? Neglect the weight of the members themselves and assume an ideal hinge at A and a perfectly flexible string BC. That means a vertical load P is supported by a string and a bar like this. Now in order to satisfy the equilibrium, interest is to find what are the forces that are acting, that are developed in the string BC and the bar BA. Now, the concept we need to remember is, if any system consisting of strings, ropes, cables, struts, then the force is along the string and it is away from the support. Because we are assuming that the forces that are acting, all these members like strings, ropes, struts are in tension. Hence, it is away from the support. That means, if you look at that BC, when you are looking from point B, the force is away from point B. And when we are looking from point C, it is away from C like this. Similarly, if the system consisting of the bars, the force is along the bar. Initially, we will assume that the bar is in tension. That means, the force is along the bar AB and if you look at from point B, it is away from point B or when you are looking from point A, it is away from point A because we are assuming that the bar is in tension initially. If you get positive answer at the end, so our initial assumed direction is right and the force is tensile force. But if it is negative, then the initial assumed direction of tension is wrong, the force is compressive, but the magnitude is same as what we calculated. Let us see. First of all, let us see what are the various forces that are acting on the system at point B. That means we will try to draw the free body diagram at B. First, let us see the various forces. The first force, of course, the self-weight of the load P always acts vertically downwards. And the force along the bar that is away from point B, let the magnitude S2. Why it is away from point B? Because initially we are assuming that the bar is in tension. Similarly, the force in the cable that is we are assuming that initially it is in tension that's why the force is away from point B. Let us transfer all these forces onto XY plane. Now the first force is P I am transferring vertical force. Next force is S2 that is the initial assumed direction of tension and the force in the in the bar is S2 and the force in the string is S1. Now given that the bar makes an angle alpha with the vertical, hence the same alpha will be represented here. The same S2 makes alpha with the vertical. Now look at this the free body diagram at point B. Now here three forces are there, all three forces are meeting at point B and all three forces are divergent. Hence, I can apply the concept of Lamy's theorem or sign rule. I have prepared a separate video on the concept of Lamy's theorem or sign rule. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. Now, according to the sign rule, the force P 
divided by angle between the other two forces. What are the other two forces? S1 and S2. What is the angle between these two? It is obviously 90 minus alpha. Hence, I can write the expression P by sine 90 minus alpha is equal to S1 divided by S1 divided by sine of angle between other two forces. What are the other two forces? S2 and P. What is the angle between these two forces? Alpha. Hence, it is S1 by sine alpha is equal to S2 divided by angle between other two forces. The total must be 360. Remember, my dear students. Hence, we need to measure the angle like this. We should not say it is 90. That is the interesting uh, point here. The total angle must be 360 degrees. Hence, it is S2 divided by angle between the S1 and P. That becomes 270 degrees. Hence, it is S2 by sine 270 degrees. Similar type of problem we have solved in 2.26 also. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. So, this is the final equations we have, uh, we have written by using sine rule. P by sine 90 minus alpha is equal to S1 by sine alpha is equal to S2 by sine 270. Now, I can take these two expressions. Sine 90 minus alpha is equal to cos alpha. So, I can write P by cos alpha is equal to S1 by sine alpha is equal to sine 270 is minus 1. So, it becomes minus S2. Now, take these two values. So, P by cos alpha is equal to S1 by sin alpha or S1 is equal to P into tan alpha. I am getting positive value. That means my initial assumed direction for S1 is tensile. That is correct. Now, take these two expressions. S2, P by cos alpha is equal to minus S2 or S2 is equal to minus P into secant alpha. I am getting minus. That means the initial assumed direction of tensile force is wrong. That means this force S2 is equal to P into secant alpha compression. So, the if you look at that a prismatic bar AB, when you are looking from point B, it is upwards or when you are looking from as far as the bar is concerned, it is like this. So, it is compressive. Okay. When you are looking from point B, it is away like this. So, when you are looking from the bar, it is towards like this. Hence, it is in compressive. So, these two are the answers for the given problem. Same problem you can also solve using the method of resolution of a force. I have already prepared a video on the concept of resolution of a force. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. Let us resolve all these forces onto X and Y axis. P is vertical. You need not to resolve. Next, S1 is horizontal along X axis. That also you need not to resolve. But S2 force, this force we need to resolve because this is the inclined force. These two for, uh, resolution of the forces are like this. S2 makes an angle alpha with the vertical. Hence, the y component of the force is S2 cos alpha. This another one is S2 sin alpha. Let us see here. You can, you can see S2 cos alpha is along y axis and S2 sin alpha is along x axis. Now, let us consider sigma Fy is equal to 0. Now, I will consider this downward direction is positive for this problem because I have two forces along y axis. Both the forces are downwards. Hence, my downward direction is positive. I can write the equation S2 cos alpha plus P is equal to 0 or S2 is equal to minus P by cos alpha or minus P into secant alpha. I am getting negative. That means the initial assumed direction of tensile force for S2 is wrong. Hence, S2 is equal to P secant alpha compressive. Similarly, you consider sigma fx is equal to 0. I will consider towards left side is positive because I have two forces along x-axis. Both are acting towards left side. 
So if you write the equation, then I will get S1 plus S2 sin alpha is equal to 0. Already I know that S2 is equal to minus P into secant alpha. So I will substitute here S1 into minus P secant alpha into sin alpha is equal to 0. So secant alpha into sin alpha. So secant alpha I can write it as 1 by cos alpha into sin alpha. So it is sin alpha by cos alpha nothing but tan alpha. S1 minus P into tan alpha is equal to 0 or S1 is equal to P tan alpha. So here I am getting S1 is positive. That means whatever the initial assumed direction of tensile force is correct. Hence S1 is equal to P tan alpha is tensile. So these two are the answers for this problem.